Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to take you on another narrated walking tour of Penang. This is a continuation of the tour we did of the expanded seawall. From the seawall, we will climb down this flight of steps to explore Georgetown's north coast. Unlike the seawall area, this stretch has not been redeveloped, so you can see it as it has been for the past 30 to 40 years. Before I go any further, let me first give you our starting point coordinates. Key these coordinates into your GPS, Google Maps or Waze to be navigated to our starting point so that you can follow this walking tour with me as your virtual tour guide. The north coast of Georgetown is fragmented into different segments. I will cover each segment with a separate video and describe the places that we pass through. To our left is Wisma Sri Pinang. It is one of the office high-rise buildings that were built here in the 1980s. Before Wisma Sri Pinang was erected, there used to be a grand three-story house on this site. On the top floor of the house was a big dance hall. In the 1970s, that house belonged to my elder brother's friend's father who used it as a paper factory. The rocky revetment that you are seeing here I believe it's quite new, dating to the 1980s when Wisma Sri Pinang was built. I remember this place quite well because I spent my afternoons after school here. I was in Standard 4 at that time. My brother, who is 12 years older than me, would fetch me from school and we would linger here until 5 o'clock when our mother got off work. But nothing I see today was there when I was a child. I do not even recall this tree, nor this gazebo. It is now in a state of ruin, but I can say that it is a pretty modern ruin. In the mid-1970s, when I was here, this place did not exist, not that I can recall. Where we are standing now was the sea. The revertment we are looking at now must have been added between the mid-1970s and present time. And as we are seeing right here, if you build something flimsy on this stretch of course, it will not stay up for long. The car park embankment we see on the right was where the sea met the shore. Erosion has always been an issue here. And even in the 1970s, the embankment built here was already showing signs of stress and decay. The car park we are seeing right now used to be the compound of the paper factory. There used to be giant rims of paper all over the place. And in the place of this high-rise office block, there was this beautiful house with, if I'm not mistaken, a roof lantern at the top. But even then, the house was already in a dilapidated state. Instead of being used as a mansion with fabulous views of the sea, it was turned into a factory. And that too was before its ultimate fate of being torn down. Alas, back in the late 1970s, we are not that sentimental about preserving our heritage. Here's a footpath that was put up in the 1980s or 90s when another round of reclamation extended the shore outward and fortified with a new revertment. From here, you can catch the view of Tanjung Tokong, which also has transformed so much since the 1970s. The name of this area is Green Hall, and this is the Green Hall Coast. The road that leads here is likewise called Green Hall. It was common practice back then to name roads after large mansions. There was no necessity to affix the word road, street, or lane. It was just Green Hall. The same is true in London, where a major road in the heart of Westminster is called Whitehall. But in recent times, to nationalise local road signs, this road is now signage Jalan Green Hall. Here we are at the very end of Jalan Green Hall, where the road meets the sea. A cluster of makeshift stalls has sprouted up to serve workers of the office blocks. It's a rather unkempt part of Georgetown, and with hawker stalls nearby, there is bound to be litter and rodents. The embankment you see on the left was also not there during my childhood. 
So much has changed over the last 30 to 40 years. Today, people know Green Hall for its concentration of private colleges and lawyer firms. But it was not so in the past. Back then, Green Hall was largely residential. Yes, there were some industries here, such as the paper factory, and I learned that there was also a salt trade. I learned from my brother's friend that the paper factory produced a famous brand of envelope used throughout the country. Welcome to Green Hall, says the writing on the step. This short flight of steps would qualify as a god, one of many series of steps leading down to water stage. There used to be many gods in Georgetown, but today, all that remains are their names on road extensions. The cluster of hawker stalls here has become a watering hole for office workers. Just behind this gate, my brother's friend used to have his art studio which he created out of a bicycle's shade. This was the extent of Green Hall back then. The high-rise office block in front of us was not there. In its place were old, dilapidated houses populated by working-class Indians and Chinese families. There was a sea wall of sorts here but not this one. It was in a much more dilapidated state. I can see that even today, Green Hall appears to be a rather neglected part of Georgetown. But it is even more so back in the mid-1970s, when I spent every school day afternoon here. Back then, the coastal revetment that was built much earlier was already crumbling and falling into the sea. If it's not much to look at today, it was even worse back then. From the road, the land dropped steeply to the water's edge, and between the scattered rocks, you could pick at the sandy beach awash by the wave. This seaside park did not exist. It is astonishing to me that this park, now looking dilapidated, did not even exist when I was a child. This gazebo, unlike the previous one we saw, is still standing albeit rather forlorn. The land itself did not exist, it was sea back then. Although I do visit Green Hall, the road, from time to time, I have not returned to this part of Georgetown's north coast until today. And I am so surprised to see how much has changed in the past 40 years. I believe this is where the coastal extension of the 1980s end. On our left is the back wall of Convent Light Street. Founded in 1852, it is the oldest girls' school not only in Penang but in the whole Malaysia. To put things into perspective, the school is older than Taiping, older than Ipoh and Kuala Lumpur. But, the land that it occupies has been in use by the British even longer, going back to the time of Captain Francis Light himself. This was where Francis Light had his house. He had two wells dug. One was to supply water to the town and another for his own use. He called the property Well Estate. I do not know the location of the town well and whether it still exists, but the well he dug for his own use is still existing and is within the grounds of the school. We can't see the well from here, but you can read about it on my Penang Travel Tips website. The sea wall or back wall of the school has been put up to arrest coastal erosion. Erosion has always been a problem along this stretch of coast, going back to Francis Light's time. But he lived for just 8 years after founding Georgetown. After he died from malaria, his estate passed on to his trading partner, James Scott. So Scott inherited the estate, along with all issues that came with it, the coastal erosion being one. We can see here that the revetment has undergone some repairs, with newer stones added to the older ones. 
As mentioned in my video on the Esplanade Sea Wall, efforts to strengthen the coast has been going on since the time of James Scott. Since the government was short of funds, Scott had to spend his own money to strengthen the coast, not only of his own property, but that of his neighbour, Captain Butler, who was often absent from Penang. But as with Francis Light, he did not live long to enjoy this property either. We have reached the bad gate of Convent Light Street. If the gate were opened, the students could enjoy a lovely view of the sea. So this was the property of James Scott. As I was saying, he did not live long to enjoy it either. He died in 1808, just four years after Captain Francis Light, while his neighbour Captain Butler died at sea in 1812. But while he was still living, James Scott leased the well estate to the British colonial government, to the East India Company to be exact. The colonial government, under Robert Townsend Farquhar, for whom Farquhar Street was named, built an administrative building on this property. That building, called Government House, is still standing today, though it has been integrated to form part of Convent Light Street. Built in 1805, Government House is older than Singapore and is almost half a century older than Convent Light Street. And as we explore Penang together through my YouTube channel, I hope I can help you appreciate the history of the places we visit. I want to share with you my accumulated knowledge, not only of Penang, but also of other places, be it Ipoh, Kuala Lumpur, Singapore and elsewhere. But creating YouTube videos is very time consuming. Until I have the chance to do the videos, do visit my website Penang Travel Tips where I have documented thousands of places. Not just in Penang, but lots of other places too. I have explored and explained them often street by street. Whether for information or entertainment, I hope my website and this YouTube channel is useful to you. Oh, if you enjoyed this video, please take a moment to give it a like. That would help the algorithm. And subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. This whole stretch which we can see before us was known during colonial times as North Beach. But since erosion necessitates replacing the beach with rocky revertments, I will call it Georgetown's North Coast. In succession, we have North Coast, Northern Beach, Gurney Drive, Gurney Wharf, and Tanjong Tokong. Together, they form a graceful curve over the northeastern part of Penang Island. In today's video, we will only cover the stretch from the end of the Esplanade Sea Wall to Penang Bone. It's a stretch that was cleared by Captain Francis Light when he established Georgetown. Aside from a lone fisherman or angler, most people in Penang would not have walked here before. What's the name of this seat? Do you know? If you do, please tell me in the comment of this video. I would love to hear from you. I can see a shade of sauce in front of us. Apparently in Penang, it is still possible to squat on any hidden nook and make it your own. To our left is the sea wall of Convent Light Street, while in front of us is the school field of the St. Saviour's Institution. This is as far as we can walk. There is a small stretch that is over water, so I need to turn back here. On the other side of the embankment is Gat Lebo Lit or Lit Street Gat, and beyond that, Shawfront. We will conclude this video here. I will now walk back to Jalan Green Hall and start a new video from there. I hope you enjoyed this narrated walking tour, exploring a Penang you won't find on tourist brochures. Do give this video a like and subscribe to this channel for more videos like this and I'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.